it, it depends on the different countries because some were very divided by the First World War. That's the case in Germany. For instance, the Germany was really divided between the left and the right, between the generals and the soldiers. And there was a kind of revolution in Germany. That is also the case in Hungary. Uh, so uh, it might happen that the First World War divide. That's, but it, it, for some of the um, nations who were the a nation who won the war, it's a bit different. And in France, uh, it created a kind of union of, with the past. But uh, this union is not very simple. It's not a country which is united. It is also a country which suffered a lot of casualties. And that's very important. So it's not only a patriotic victory and everyone saying, oh, that's wonderful, we won. Uh, that was not the case for the veterans. Uh, for them, the war was also a huge loss of casualty. So the, ca the commemoration, of course, united, but it was a united in the deaths, the deaths of the comrades. So you see, it's not very simple. You cannot say that it's only a division and conflict. There was very many conflicts after the First World War uh, everywhere uh, in Europe. And even in the countries who won the war, uh, there was a lot of sadness, a lot of deaths. And uh, in France, too, there was many social and political conflicts. Um, you should uh, remember that the Communist Party uh, is born out of the war and there was a lot of strikes in France in 1920 and in 1919. So, of course, there is a, a discourse of a United Nation who won the war, but there is also a lot of conflicts, uh, political conflicts, uh, social conflicts, strikes. So uh, to get out of the war was very difficult and always with the memory of the casualties of the death. I think that the centenary of the war could have different meanings, uh, depending on the countries, uh, depending on the political actors, uh, depending on the people. So uh, every commemoration uh, is a discourse on the past. So we cannot say that there will be only one centenary. It depends. For instance, in Russia, it will be a very nationalistic, a very patriotic uh, centenary. Of course, in, uh, in Italy, in France, in England, it might be a bit different, uh, but every country can do what uh, it wants with the centenary. So we have to, to hear the different discourses. But wh why is it so important today? Uh, for me, it's not a question of a very uh, patriotic fervor or nationalistic uh, um, uh, uh, sentiments. It's not that question. That could be uh, the fact in the, by the government, but for the people, what is, to my opinion, the most important is um, the memory of the families. The family, that means the uh, gr grandfather, the uh, grand-grandfather who died in the war. And in many countries, this is the story of a family. And that's why that the centenary is so popular in England, of course, in Italy, in France, because uh, most of the families uh, have a story in the world. And that's uh, uh, important. This, sto this story has to be told. The story of the grandfather who m might have m much suffered from the war. And this is a popular memory. So there is the discourses of the governments. And we have to wait uh, because those uh, discourses might be very different from a government to another. But there is also a popular uh, memory of the war, a popular commemoration of the war. That's also very important. And this centenary is important because this is also the commemoration of the war death, of the death of the war, of the soldier who fell for their countries. And that's also the story of so many young people uh, who died for uh, many different things because they did not die all for the uh, country. This is a discourse of the governments, but some died without any ideology, without any uh, motivation. So that's important to discuss. Why did the soldiers uh, fight so much uh, during the war? What was the motivation? Were their uh, motivation everywhere the same? So uh, a centenary is also a good occasion to discuss, to raise questions and also to criticize some discourse which were held about the war. So wh what is interesting in a commemoration is not only the political discourse, but also, uh, I would say, to create a public sphere, a public sphere for the people everywhere, so everyone can discuss, have many ideas. And to my opinion, the role of the historian, the role of the academics, is to give people uh, many facts, many interpretation, and then the people can dis discuss can have their own ideas 
And that would be the best for the centenary if you can open a public sphere to discuss of the war. Why such a war? What happened during the war? What was the motivation of the soldier? It should not be the centenary of the governments. It should not be the centenary of the historian. It should be the centenary for everyone. But everyone with good facts, with good interpretation given by the historians, given by the media, given by the books, and then it opens a public sphere to discuss about the past. That would be the best way uh, to commemorate. I think that's something which is um, pretty new. It's that uh, the centenary of the world has to be thought as a global uh, centenary because all the continents were involved in the war. There is soldiers who came from all over the world. They came from the French colonies. So there was also some uh, fights in Africa. Uh, there was also some fights uh, between China and Japan. Uh, there was uh, some soldiers who came from Australia, who came from New Zealand. And so there was also some uh, uh, workers who came from China. There's a lot of workers who came from China, from Indochina, from the French colonies. So the story of the First World War is a story which involved the whole world. So that's a goal. And uh, that is something very important today, and it is at stakes in the centenaries to be able to celebrate, to commemorate a, 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 an event which was very global. And that's also a good uh, um, occasion to develop discussion about this globalization during the First World War. And it involved also uh, South America, because the, some uh, countries in South America get, got involved in the war, following the American. For instance, Brazil uh, got into the war and some volunteers came from South America. So workers from China, volunteers from South America, soldiers from the New Caledonia, from Australia, from all over the world. That was really a global war. So we have to say that and we are also to commemorate thinking that it was a global war. So we have to discuss with many different countries. That's also a goal and that is at stake for, in my opinion, for the Central to be able uh, to build a global commemoration to think together about what happened during the First World War. In the um, French army, a lot of people uh, came from the colonies, came from Africa, came from North Africa, uh, came from the Antilles. And so uh, some of those people were Muslims. And uh, it was important. And what, there was a kind of uh, propaganda war between the Germans, which were allied with the Turks, and the French, because the Turks uh, proclaimed the Jihad. And the Germans also tried to seduce the Muslim soldiers. So it was important. Uh, for the French government also to develop a discourse to say, okay, we protect the Muslims and they are free to uh, do their religion uh, as they want to. Uh, so they built a mosque, a first mosque in a garden in Paris to say and to display some Muslims, uh, soldiers who were wounded and also to develop the cult of the Muslim religion. And what was built in the Bois de Vincennes in Paris and that was also very used by the government. Some ministers came to see, see how the uh, Muslim soldiers are treated. They are, they are very well treated. So there is no reason to be seduced by the propaganda from Germany or from the Turkish allies. So it was also a question of propaganda to develop a very good image of the French government during the war to say, OK, the, the Muslim soldiers are very well treated uh, in the French army. And you can see many pictures uh, from the mosque of the Jardin d'Agronomie Tropicale in Paris. Many pictures and many films and propaganda to say, OK, the soldiers of the colonies are well treated and there is no reason uh, to flee away.